All right, real quick, kind of want to go through chapter five. Um, since this is going to become a self-study, I want to make sure you have a lecture for you to kind of go through and to reflect upon as you are going through this. So I know some of this we've already covered, but here we are. First and foremost, um, I'm going to start here on page 90, preventing a crash. A couple things that you need to be aware of as a new driver is that you need to be alert, need to be prepared, and act in time. That is the, per, uh, the formula for prevention of a crash. Okay, alert, knowing what's happening, uh, be prepared, anticipate, you know, the unexpected, as well as um, be reactive, okay? You're paying attention, that's you being alert. All right, aggressive driving and road rage. All right, your emotions have a huge factor um, on how you drive. They are influential, okay? Um, if you're calm, you're going to drive calmly. If you're angry, you're going to drive more aggressively, okay? Um, aggressive driving is unlawful driving actions, okay? But they are going to be characterized as speeding the vehicle, making proper erratic traffic changes, disregarding traffic control devices, failing to yield the right of way, or fa fa following another vehicle too closely. In New Jersey, we call that tailgating, okay? Um, it's actually important, okay, um, why some people assume that it's slow, it's better to go slower with other vehicles. It's actually important to keep up with the flow of traffic, okay? Um, we talk about people that are driving too slow, how they can become a hazard to other people out on the roadway. So it's important that when you are driving, um, you keep up with the flow of traffic. People will get annoyed if you drive too slow. Okay, another example would be uh, making proper and erratic lane changes can result in crashes. Okay, so make sure that you are changing your lanes appropriately um, and that you know what's happening around your car at all times. Okay, that you're using the mirrors and you know where vehicles are positioned. Okay, um, as you are driving, you're going to learn, you're going to keep your vehicle in the center lane um, and avoiding uh, disruption of safe flow of traffic. Okay, um, so you could be by you going back and forth in your lane um, can startle other drivers. Therefore, they have to react and it may not be a favorable reaction. Okay, the other bullet that you know is disregarding traffic control devices resulting in crashes. Therefore, always be obeyed. Okay, a red light means red light. Yellow light means slow down. Okay, green light means go. Okay, um, failing to yield to the right of way is also another way. And then following a vehicle too closely increases your likelihood of a crash, okay? Um, if driving conditions are terrible, okay, rain, snow, fog, okay, um, your car is and the maintenance on it is not adequate, um, it's important to increase your safety distance between these vehicles to allow additional safety or uh, additional uh, stop time, okay? Do not tailgate. Okay, using the three second rule plus, and we'll talk about that momentarily. Okay, road rage is going to occur when motorists lose their tempers. Okay, um, they're going to be so busy uh, worrying about themselves, yelling at you, telling you that you're number one, um, with face gestures, um, you know, hand gestures. Okay, sometimes they're going to honk the horns, they're going to, you know, speed up and like, you know, um, try to use their card to intimidate you. All right, if you see this occurring, it's important that you know you have help, okay? Call um, call for help with that by pound 77, okay? Distractions, when you are driving, okay? As GDL drivers, you shouldn't be doing anything, but, you know, um, things do happen and you should be aware of some distractions that um, are looked at, frowned upon as you are um, driving as it deters your attention away from it, okay? So distracted drivers um, in, in accidents, okay? Go too fast, drift out of lanes, all right? Again, accidents are going to, you know, by you being distracted, accidents do occur. So lighting a cigarette, trying to fasten your seatbelt, um, reaching across the seat to close the door, or go in your glove box, or reaching for something, um, you know, coins in your pocket, so you're trying to go into your pocket to get something out, uh, a watch, adjusting your watch, uh, wa watching children or pets in the vehicle, okay, 
um, trying to remove your coat, reading maps, newspapers, eating while drinking. And uh, to touch on this map to newspapers, a lot of these cars, they're um, with GPS units and the whole brain of the LCD and all that. There's a lot going on in the, the screens of the radios now. Um, your temperature control, they're essentially the brain of the car and they can be very distracting as I have found them to be if you don't know how to operate it. Okay, you're trying to figure out how to turn the heat on in the car, but you got to flip through all these screens to find the heat. All right, um, adjusting the mirrors while you're driving, using a cell phone or electronic device, adjusting the radio, uh, shaving, believe it or not, or makeup or using a laptop um, while driving. Okay, you shouldn't be doing any of these things, especially under your GDL. It's a violation of your GDL um, guidelines, okay? So tired drivers, highway hypnosis, okay? Once you start to drive, there's going to be points in time when you are driving that you may not realize you got from point A to point B, okay? You're going to kind of become in this fog. So a tired driver is a dangerous driver, okay? Um, you're not able to make good decisions at that time. Your reaction time is reduced. You may get upset. You're actually even um, more dangerous than a drunk driver. So Maggie's Law makes it illegal knowing to operate a vehicle under um, while you're impaired by a lack of sleep. So what that means is that you get into an accident and you are you know, sleep deprived because you have been up for 24 hours. Maggie's Law makes it easier for the prosecutors to um, prosecute you for vehicular uh, homicide, okay? So recklessness. Um, talking about when you've been behind the wheel for too long. So if you've driven here, maybe across country to Florida, something like that, um, highway hypnosis, you become like in a trance from the road because you're so busy staring at it for long periods of time. So it's ideal for you to move your eyes around um, every couple hours, stop, stretch out, go to the bathroom, move around. Okay, that's going to help um, with that highway hypnosis. Drowsy driving. Okay, when um, for people that are going to be um, involved with that tired driving, people who are sleep deprived, the long distance without taking breaks, driving through the night or other times when they're asleep. Medicine, okay? Um, well, if your medicine says do not operate heavy machinery, that means a vehicle, okay? Driving alone, driving on long, rural, boring roads, young people, shift workers, commercial drivers, okay? These are all the people that get affected by drowsy driving, okay? Communicating as you are driving, we all know that the horn is a warning device. Okay, you can use your turn signals, including your hands, um, when appropriate to tell other motorists what's happening. Okay, another method is to try to catch their eye, if possible, maybe a horn to let other people know, or at night, a quick flip of the headlights may be helpful. Okay, at nighttime, a lot of people will do that, and that has to do with people not realizing that their headlights and their taillights and all that stuff, that their lights are not on for the vehicle, and it makes it hard to see cars as they are driving. Okay, um, as you are going through this, okay, um, just rule of thumb is to be patient when you're driving through the town or the city and try not to make any quick turns or lane changes. Okay, rush hour traffic become irritating, meaning road rage. Always use your good judgment. Um, know the signs and the rules of the road. Um, and if something does happen, use your emergency flashers if you have to pull off the road, okay? Keeping a safe distance and not tailgating, all right? Um, again, keeping that space cushion, going back to that formula, being alert, being prepared, and reacting in time. You reacting, uh, you keeping a good, uh, being alert and reacting in time is going to help prevent emergencies. Okay, tailgating is referring closely behind a vehicle, all right, a common cause of uh, crashes, all right, so you don't want to rear-end somebody or be rear-ended. Tailgating can cause this, uh, the rear-ended when they're too close, a space cushion, all right, so those are going to be the things that you need to do. Um, a couple different methods to help create a adequate space cushion is going to be the one car length. Okay. Um, they're suggesting that you are using one car length every 20 feet for every 10 miles per hour of speed at high speeds and bad weather. You should increase the space. 
So if you're driving 50 miles an hour, this car is showing here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and that's the other car. So there's going to be five car lengths approximately 100 feet based on this formula, okay? So it's important that you keep that in mind. Another method is the three seconds plus rule, okay? What you are going to do, since people can't adequately say, oh, that's 20 feet, that's 30 feet, that's 40 feet, um, what you're going to do is choose a fixed object ahead of you, such as a telephone pole, okay? It could be a sign or a tree. Um, it, you want to make sure it's in your line of sight. And as that vehicle passes that object, begin counting 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. If it takes less than three seconds before your vehicle passes, that means you do not have enough distance. You are too close. If you have enough time, you are practicing safe distance. Okay? Remember, your braking distance equals your perception and reaction as well as your uh, stopping. Okay? Stopping distance equals your perception and reaction plus braking distance. So remember, the faster you are driving, the heavier your car is, the longer it's going to take it to come to a complete stop. Okay, um, again, kind of reiterating with what I just said, heavier vehicles, longer to stop. Um, during bad weather, you should increase this to four or more seconds. So it'd be one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. Okay, following distance. A motor should always increase their following distance when road conditions are poor. Seems pretty obvious, Okay. Here um, is going to give you kind of a quick idea of what um, following distances should be in car lengths based on your speed. So you have your ideal conditions on a sunny day, wet pavement, gravel, packed snow, ice, etc. Okay, remember on ice, you can't control the vehicle. All right, so you want to make sure you have um, enough space to stop and, you know, let your vehicle do what it does on ice. Okay, changing lanes. Okay, when you're changing a lane, look at the rear view mirror. That's going to be the first thing. You want to know at this point, you should already have an idea what's happening with you with traffic in front of you, traffic on the left, traffic on the right, and behind you. Glance at your blind spots by looking over your shoulder. Always use a signal, okay? Before passing or changing lane, lanes, keep in mind, only pass when necessary. Pass and change lanes if it can be completed without speeding. So it doesn't mean that if for you to change uh, lanes that you have to drive 95 miles an hour to go back down to 65. That's not okay. Okay? Keep a safe following distance and not tailgate. Check your traffic ahead. Pass when signs and pavement markings are uh, permitting. Uh, signal every time. When you are going back to your right lane, use your signal again. And then um, a good indication for you that you have enough uh, space between you and the vehicle you just passed is by looking at your rear view mirror. Okay, that's going to be a good indication. And once you get back into your lane, just cancel your turn signal. You don't want to be that person that's going to drive down the road with the turn signal on for miles. Okay, because it just creates havoc. Um, for other passengers on the roadway. All right, when you are passed by another vehicle, okay, um, you need to be careful. Slow down and let them in, okay? By you slowing down, it makes it easier for them to um, enter and, and do it safely. So at that point, um, return to normal speed after passing the vehicle as well ahead of you. Okay, road conditions. Wet roads, not ideal. So your three second plus rule should be increased to four or more seconds. Sudden turns may cause your vehicle to skid. All right. Hydroplaning is going to be when wet surfaces, um, geez, sorry. Uh, hydroplane is when surfaces cause the, um, when the the tires lead the the roadway, okay, so they ride up on a film of water. So think of it like when you were walking and you slip on ice, your your sneakers aren't necessarily touching the ground. It's on a layer between the uh, the the sole of your shoe and the actual surface, okay. So at 35 miles an hour, 
it could cause you to lose control of your vehicle. At 55 miles an hour, your tires may totally leave the roadway. In this case, it is not possible for you to control your vehicle. You're not able to turn, you're not able to um, brake, etc. Okay, um, a gust of wind or a change in the road level can create a skid if it causes you to, uh, if your vehicle's hydroplaning. So you hit a bump and you're hydroplaning, it can cause you to, you know, skid off the side of the road. So do not, make sure you have a good set of tires on your car. Slow down during heavy rain, standing water, and when slush is present in a heavy rainstorm, try to drive on the highest point of the road. Okay, the center lane would be the best thing. Okay, um, when you have really bad rain, you want to try to stay in the center lane on a multi-lane highway because the water is going to pool on the edges of the road, but the middle road, the middle of the road should be pretty good. All right, snow and ice. Welcome to New Jersey. Winter here. Okay, when you are driving, make sure you give your car a proper chance to warm up, okay? Remember, we can't idle for more than three minutes. All snow and ice must be removed. Again, we talked about that. It's a fine. So you have to remove all your snow and ice from the vehicle and make sure that you have a proper amount of windshield washer fluid, okay? Um, a lot of people will mix water during the summer with windshield washer fluid. The problem is in the winter time, if it's the original windshield washer fluid from oil change in June, it could cause your windshield, uh, it could cause freezing to occur in the lines. In the event, um, you want to kind of, with it snow and ice, you want to get a feel for what's happening. Gently apply the brakes while trying to figure out how slippery the road is. Okay, never slam on your brakes in the snow and ice. Okay, your vehicle is going to skid if you accelerate too quickly, you turn too fast, you use your brakes improperly. So if you um, slam on your brakes, that can likely increase the likelihood of you skidding. Okay, motorists that have anti lag brakes should keep the foot on the brake pedal and not pump your brakes. So that's going to be most of your cars that you're going to have anti lock brakes. Um, when, and if you get stuck in the snow, you're going to do a combination of putting your car in drive and then, you know, trying to get out of it and then stop, put your car in reverse and you're going to create a rocking motion going back and forth to get out of, um, a snow bank. Okay. Um, again, talking about for idling your vehicle for no more than three minutes here. Nice reminder, with the exception of um, if your vehicle is in traffic, it's being repaired, waiting to be expected, emergency vehicles in emergency, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are the conditions in which you're allowed to idle your vehicle. All right, reduce visibility. Poor roadway or weather conditions require you to increase your following distance. Okay. At this point, a good rule of thumb is to, on snow-covered roads to use six seconds or more. Okay, if you wake up in the morning and there's frost and ice in your car, scrape and use your defroster. Okay, um, if you are if your defrosters don't work and you have bad weather, um, make sure that you uh, you know you are not trying to push it through. Okay, and drive in it. Um, it says to use your heater. Okay. You'll know how your car operates the best. Um, fog. Okay. Never use your high beams. You want to keep your low beam lights on and, um, your fog lights if you have them. Okay. Uh, what happens with high beams is that it amplifies the water droplets in the fog. Therefore it, you know, reflecting back at you and it reduces the visibility. So it makes a really bad situation even worse when you're driving with high beams. Sun glare. Okay. If you're driving into the sunset, um, with your loved one, sun visor should be used to shield your eyes from the glare of the sun. Okay. That's going to help hold the steering wheel and you're going to 
lower it and then you're just gonna you know watch what's happening um you also want to be aware of what's happening because if the angle of the sun it makes it hard to see the taillights in front of you from the other cars so you thinking of that being alert being prepared reacting in time that mentality is going to be huge um during this situation with the sun glare okay uh night driving so when you are driving in the nighttime to drive safely, slow down and drive within the range of the vehicle's headlights. So that means that if you can't see what's happening in front of you, you should not be flying down the road. Okay. A motorist should be able to stop within the distance that you could see ahead. Okay. Um, you want to factor in speed, your reaction distance and braking distance. Okay. Uh, this time of year, as you are driving at night, you have to factor in um, animals crossing the road. I was driving the other night on Route 18, and I'm so used to looking for deer in the road um, that I saw this little thing crossing the road and it turned out to be a fox. And, you know, a fox is the size of a dog. It kind of threw me because I'm so used to looking for this big four or 500 pound animal, and there's this little, you know, 80 pound fox running across the street or across the highway. Okay. Other safety rules when you're driving at night, okay, drive with your headlights on at dusk, night, dawn, and dark days. Your visibility is less than 500. State exam question, that 500 feet. Um, you want to drive slower than during your daylight. That should be kind of common sense since you can't see as well. Watch for signs, vehicles, pedestrians, etc. Okay, and then allow for safety margin. So increase your following distances when you are driving at night. So if you're driving in the city, heavier traffic, more pedestrians, you need to be alert. Okay, um, it's important that you have to anticipate the movements of others when you are in the city. Okay, motorists must stop for pedestrians in a crosswalk, um, whether it's marked or unmarked. So it's important to know that. City driving. Again, I want to say it's another test question. Motor should look at least 12 seconds ahead. So what that means is that you see an object far enough and it should take you 12 seconds to get to it. When driving 25 miles per hour, you should be able to see a, clearly a block ahead of you. Okay. Um, when you are driving, many motorists fail to see the intersections. Okay. So a couple things that you keep in mind in the middle of a block, make sure you look ahead and see what's happening for traffic controls. When approaching the intersection, reduce your speed, glance left and right, and then keep your foot on the brake. At the crosswalk, the vehicle should be in its lowest speed. Motorists must decide whether to stop or go across, take a quick glance. So remember, when you are in the city, you have a lot of people that are walking, so you're anticipating the movement of other pedestrians as you are driving, okay? Watch for uncontrolled intersections where there's lights or no signs. The end of the day, look, listen, and think, okay? Be ready. Expect the unexpected when you are driving in the city. So you need to be focused because there's just a lot of different things that are going to be happening while doing that. If you're on the highway, exceeding the posted speed limits, driving too fast is one of the biggest reasons why people get into car accidents, what this means is motorists must drive defensively and stay within the speed limit. So you want to keep an idea of what's happening. Um, again, going with this mentality, expect the unexpected, um, because some highways, you know, depending on where you are, once maybe you're out of state, in state, et cetera, um, the signs, there may not be traffic signs, there may not be um, uh, speed limits uh, posted. So keeping up with that flow of traffic, um, you know, watch what's happening and, you know, anticipate the movements of others is going to be important. Okay. Hills, bridges, and other road hazards. So, um, there's going to be signage that's going to let you know what's happening when they come, when you see big hills, dips, narrow bridges, bumps, and railroad tracks. Driving sl slowly is going to be key. Speeding and applying brakes firmly can cause your car to spin out. Okay, so if you're driving too fast and then all of a sudden you're, the road dips down um, and you slam on the brakes, it could cause you to lose control of your vehicle. So be cautious when traveling in farm country and open land where livestock or deer may cross the road. 
going back to what I said, driving at night, be alert, especially this time of year in the fall and in the spring, deer mating season, deer hunting season. Uh, so deer tend to be more active during the um at dusk and dawn uh the other morning driving to school i saw seven deer between here and freehold on the side of the road so that's a pretty high number of people that hit deer um so it's kind of sad okay um if you encounter an animal slow down try to avoid it okay they make unexpected moves so you need to be alert all right so you ha have to you know ready be ready for it Again, be prepared, be alert, act in time. All right, construction zones. If you see construction zone, your fines are doubled during this, okay? There's going to be signage. They're going to let you know um, that you're entering the construction zone. Sometimes cops will hide in there. Um, and if you fly through there, they will pull you over and things may not end out well for you. So a couple tips as you are driving through construction zone, stay alert, pay attention, turn on your headlights, do not tailgate, do not speed, um, avoid any distractions, expect the unexpected and be patient, okay? Um, I have said this in a few classes, but um, for a long time, uh, there was a campaign that said, slow down, my mommy works here, slow down, my daddy works here in these construction zones. Um, there are people that are walking and you're driving by at 60 miles an hour, um, it's not a good situation for those people. All right. So if you get into a situation, you're reacting to a, a skid. Okay. So sudden turn can cause your vehicle to go to a skid. So what that means is that the car is going to start to slide or move, you know, turn, um, it's going to direct itself in the direction that it wants. So if the rear end of your vehicle starts to slide, you need to take your foot off the gas pedal. Do not touch the brake. Okay. So you want to turn in the direction in the rear of the vehicle skidding without oversteering. Okay. Um, you should be able to feel when the vehicle is back under control avoid using those brakes. So if I'm skidding to the right, okay, the back of my car is going to the left, I want to turn my wheels so I'm going to the left. Hopefully that makes sense. So you want to turn into the rear of the vehicle. Emergency stops. You get into a situation where you need to pull over. Pave shoulders on the highway. Signal turn onto the shoulder at near traffic speed. Do not slow down and then turn off. You want to slow down on the shoulder of the roadway. Um, where the shoulder is unpaved, signal a turn, slow down, and try to approach it at a safe speed before turning off. Once the vehicle is pulled over, make sure your hazard lights are put on so people know. Okay, emergency. Um, if possible, if you have a flare put a, or another warning device, put that out so people know. Raise the hood. Again, this is going back. A white handkerchief, the antenna, um, if you need help, okay? This, I feel, is kind of outdated, the white handkerchief. Um, you'll see sometimes on the highway, white bags. Um, those are the same idea, but most of uh, everybody has cell phones now, so they call for help, okay? Um, running off the pavement. You lose control of your vehicle, you go off the roadway. The vehicle's wheels drift onto the shoulder of the road. Do not try to turn back quickly. So if you're on a road that, um, I'll do this, and there's the shoulder, and this is grass, okay? If your car goes off the shoulder, off the roadway quickly, don't try to turn on quick, turn it back quickly onto the roadway. What you're going to do is you're going to, um, Essentially, you're going to uh, slow down to t try to slow, slow the vehicle as much as possible, 25 miles or less, and then turn back on the roadway by steering the wheel one quarter a turn and gently easing its way back on to the vehicle. So it says there, slow down, regain control, slowly return to the, uh, the roadway. Car fires, tragic situation. Um, if you have a car fire, get out of it. Call 911 and then try to get as far away as possible from the vehicle. 
in the unfortunate event your vehicle goes into the water water causes more panic okay um a couple things to keep in mind a vehicle with its windows and doors closed will float for about three to ten minutes so what will happen is the car will sink um from the nose down okay and we'll talk about that in a moment so a couple things to keep in mind um if you are to self-rescue from submerge wear a seatbelt which will increase the chance of surviving the initial impact um of the water and while the vehicle is still floating in the surface to escape through an open window um it will be hard for you to open the door because of water pressure but a window can be rolled down power windows may short out so try to open them at once okay glass um and the side and rear view mirrors can be, uh, I'm sorry, rear view windows can be broken, but only with a heavy hard object, okay? Front engine, as I said, your nose of your car is going to sink, so the engine's going to go, and then the trunk. So when the passengers are inside, the vehicle is equal. It's easiest to open door. should not try to escape through the door, or um, you should try to escape through a door or a window. Remember, the three to five minutes gives plenty of time in the emergency. So the seatbelt is going to be um, helping you um, keep you safe, hopefully, um, surviving that initial impact so you don't become unconscious. Once out of the vehicle, you may become disoriented. Always remember to follow the air bubbles are going to go up. Bubbles go up. Okay, remember that. Um, I talked about the next one. When we were talking about parking, uh, you have to, when the trains come, you have to be 15 feet from the uh, tra train tracks. So if you stop on the vehicle, I'm sorry, if you stop on the railroad tracks and your vehicle becomes disabled, you need to get out of there, okay? Even if the train's not approaching, um, you need to call 911. If a train's approaching, run on a 45-degree angle from the vehicle uh but in the direction of the train to avoid being injured by the flying debris so think of it uh you want to run towards the train so you're running behind your vehicle um because what's going to happen is the train's going to come this way and impact here but if you run over to here it's going to help decrease the likelihood of you becoming injured by flying debris okay so hopefully none of you ever have to experience that. It would be pretty tragic. Okay, vehicle failure. All right, saying no matter how well you take care of your car, things could happen. So your brakes fail. All right, um, shift your car into lower gear. Pump the brakes as fast, as hard as you can. Okay, this may build up enough pressure in the brake uh, system to stop it. And if this doesn't work, Try to use your parking brake, okay? You're going to do this gingerly so you don't lock up the wheels and cause the car to flip, okay? Um, I had a, a cut, my cousin's friend, they got a brand new car and they were driving and they pulled on the e-brake while driving and flipped the whole car and, and uh, totaled out the car in an accident. So don't do that because that will happen. Tire blowout, okay? Uh, flat tire or blowout. What you're going to do is hold the steering wheel firmly and keep the vehicle straight and gradually slowing down. The motor should, you should remove your foot from the gas pedal and do not use the brakes. Coast to a stop into a safe area on the roadway. Power steering. So in the event that your power steering goes, power steering helps make the turning of the wheel a lot smoother. Okay. So if the power steering fails um, when the engine dies the steering will fail the motor should keep a firm grip on the wheel because the, you're going to need the extra strength to keep the car um, to turn or keep it in control okay headlight failure your headlights fail okay um, what you're going to do is get your vehicle stopped to a safe area off the roadway, the headlight dimmer switches may help. The lights go on again, so that means you, try, you could try playing with it. If it does not work, um, you should use your parking lights or emergency flashers to or turn signals and call for help. Okay. In the event that not only do you have to worry about headlight failure, but if your brakes fail, your brake lights aren't working, 
use your emergency flashers. Okay. Um, I've been behind cars where you're, you're stopping and they have no brake lights working and that could be pretty dangerous. Um, especially if you're not paying attention. Gas pedals. So you're in the unfortunate situation where your gas pedal gets stuck. Okay. Put your car in neutral and then you want to steer your vehicle to a safe spot off the roadway, turn your engine off and call for help. There is not much you could do. You're going to have to get towed. If the hood latch fails, all right, so that means your hood of your vehicle flies up at you, okay, if it suddenly flies up, the motor should slow down immediately, um, there's going to be a crack between the hood and the uh, the uh, car, look out through that little uh, side window or if possible around the hood, using a center lane or lane markings as a guide, the motor should pull the vehicle to a safe area and call for help, again, you're probably not driving away in that. Windshield wiper failure, okay, slow down, pull to a safe area of the roadway, turn on your flashers, um, if need be, call for help. All right, in the event of a car accident, crashes, okay, avoiding them, um, stop quickly, all right, so you want to be aware, again, you're anticipating all that's going on around you, it's called driving defensively, um, so if you can stop quickly, that will be helpful, um, you may need to turn quickly, so know what's going on around you. And sometimes you may just need to speed up to get out of there, okay? Sometimes you see something happen to you, you speed up to get away from it, okay? Um, at the end of the day, never, never, never panic, okay? It's important that um, if, if you panic, it's, not gonna, it's just going to complicate things, okay? So take a deep breath. Um, and be aware of what's happening and reacting properly can help you um, avoid a situation, whereas panicking may increase the likelihood of a situation. Okay. If you see in your rear view mirror that you're about to get hit from behind the motorist, be ready. Uh, you should be applying your brakes to the car because it's going to help slow the momentum down. Okay. Um, and being pushed into um, other vehicles ahead. Um, side crash. If you're going to get hit from the side, motor should keep a tight grip on the steering wheel. They may help keep you being thrown from the vehicle or from the side. Okay. Um, turn fast. So the vehicle spins around, they can try to control the vehicle. Okay. Head on crash. If you're hit from the front, the motor should use their arms to protect their face. Shoulder strap of the vehicle is equipped with airbags. If the vehicle is not equipped with the shoulder strap or airbags, you throw themselves across the seat to keep from the steering wheel from hitting the steering wheel or the windshield. Airbags typically deploy um, at, with the vehicles that have them. It's going to be about 200 miles per hour that they um, come out. Parked vehicle crash. You hit a parked vehicle. You need to call the police. It's called a hit and run. Do not do that. Okay, hit and run you can get in a lot of trouble for. So if you get if you hit something, uh, you need to let the police know. Hit and runs are not a good situation. Um, in the event that you call you hit a car uh, and you can't find the owner, um, you know by you calling in the police, you filling out a police report. You could also always leave your phone number on their car, um, and they can call you after the fact. At the end of the day. What you need to do uh, in the event of a car accident, stop the vehicle, remain calm, assume the worst, call 911, wait at the scene, try not to block traffic, ask for assistance from other people if possible. Um, depending on your location, um, you may need to warn oncoming traffic. Okay. It is important that in New Jersey, you are required to report your accident if there is injury, death, or vehicle, or property damage. If someone's been killed, don't touch the body, okay? I know that sounds crazy, but don't touch them. Leave it there, okay? Um, call 911 and let them handle all that. Um, after the accident, if you've been involved in a situation, you need to let your insurance company know. And then, if possible, if you are shooken up, go seek medical attention. So that is chapter five. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to explain any of the concepts further. But at this point, um, a pretty comprehensive 
uh, overview of what is happening in Chapter 5 and all the different scenarios as you are driving. Thanks for listening.